Yo, 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 yo. Hey guys, so we are going to work on 8.2, solving systems of equations, but now we're going to solve by using the substitution method. So we're not going to solve by graphing. Okay, so under your key terms, here is a list of your steps for using the substitution method. I'm not going to read this out loud right now, we're just going to get into it right now. So here I have a system of equations. Now, one way we could do this is we could change these into slope-intercept form, and we could graph them. So I could add 3x to both sides here. That goes away. I get y equals 3x plus 1, and then I could graph that. 1, 2, 3 over 1. So there's my equation. That is one way to do this. Okay. I could do the same thing with the second one, and then I can solve. Instead, what we're going to do is we are going to worry about the substitution method. The second one, if I graphed it, just so you know, I would have subtracted 4x from both sides. I would have started at positive 8, which is all the way up here. I would have gone down 4, 2, 3, 4, and gone over 1. There's my solution at 1, 4. But what happens is, is we don't always have a graph in front of us, and it's not always um, very efficient to use a graph when the numbers are larger and they're, they're harder to graph. So the substitution method is to do it without graphing. So with substitution, what we're going to do is we need to have a variable by itself. So we need to have something to be y equals or even x equals, or the variables by itself. So what I did is I changed this one to this, so now I have the y equals right here. Well, what I can do is without doing an equation, actually I guess I can keep that up, it doesn't really matter is I have this y equals 3x plus 1, and then I have my second equation right here. What I can do is we have a y here, and I'm told that y is all of this, this 3x plus 1 right here. Well, if y is equal to 3x plus 1, I can take this 3x plus 1 and plug it in for y in my second equation, because this is y equals this. So I can rewrite the second equation right here by replacing this y with what it's equal to from the first equation. So that's why we have to have a variable by itself, because then I can substitute in for that variable in the other equation. So in this first one, we added 3x to both sides to make it y equals. And then I'm taking what y is equal to, and I'm plugging in into that second equation. So I'm going to rewrite this. So I bring the 4x plus, and then I'm going to make a substitution in parentheses. That's 3x plus 1. So I replace this y with 3x plus 1, and that's also equal to 8. If we look, now what I have is I have an equation that just has one variable. I just have it, the x value. So what I can do is I get to solve this for x. Now I put it in parentheses because I like to always make a substitution in parentheses so I can clearly see that I replaced this with y before, and I replaced it with this. But there's nothing being multiplied by these parentheses, so there's really no reason to have them there. So I don't actually need them. So I can combine my like terms. 4x and 3x makes 7x. I saw plus 1 equals 8. And if you notice, I have a two-step equation now. I can subtract 1 on both sides. 7x equals 7 divided by 7. And I get x equals 1, which is what we had here when we solved it by graphing. So I figured out my x value by making a substitution. Now what I can do is I can take this x equals 1, and this is all in your key terms here. I can substitute that back into one of my original equations to solve for y. So I take this x equals 1, and i got to plug it back in for x here. I can plug it in for x here. Or I can even plug it in for x here. I have three equations that I can plug it into. I choose the one that looks like the easiest one to solve. So like if I were to plug in x for 1 here, that's y equals 3 times whatever x is plus 1. We're saying x is 1. Now I solve this. Well, that's 4 plus, that's, I'm sorry, 3 times 1 is not 4. 3 times 1 is 3. So 3 plus 1, which is 4. So I get y equals 4 which again is what we got. So my solution is the point 1, 4. x is 1, y is 4. 
Let's look at another example here. I'm not going to bother with graphing this one. Um, I just want to focus on solving it algebraically by using substitution. So, because here I have to convert both of these to graph it to slope intercept form, and that's kind of a lot of work. And so I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for any one of these variables. I can solve for x, x, y, or y. I choose the one that's the easiest one to solve for. Well, the easiest one to solve for is the one that doesn't have a number in front of it. Because if I like chose to add to solve for this y, I got to subtract x, and then I got to divide. And I don't want to divide by anything. That's extra work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the var look at the variable that doesn't have anything in front, which would be this x right here, and I'm going to solve for that x. So if I want to solve for this x, I want to get this by itself, which means I got to get rid of the minus 4y. Well, I do that by adding 4y to both sides. Because that makes that just go away. So this equation now becomes x equals 4y plus 4. And that's a y. Let's make that a clear y. So I just added 4y to both sides. Now I have an x equals something. Okay, so because this equation became this, this x equals, I can plug in this for x in the second equation. Because I'm told that x is all of this. x is 4y plus 4. So I can replace this x with 4y plus 4. So I'm going to rewrite that equation. 2 times x, well x, I'm going to plug it in here. So x is 4y plus 4. So that's 2 times x. And then I'm going to include the rest. That's minus 3y equals negative 3. So I rewrote the rest of the equation here. So this became this. I rewrote the rest of this equation. Okay. But then I made that substitution in for x. Now I solve this equation. So I do that by doing distributive property. Oh, well, that's why I wrote in parentheses. This is two times whatever x was. Well, x was all of this. So I got to do two times four y, which is a y. Two times four, which is eight. Minus three y equals negative three. Combine my like terms. Five y plus eight equals negative three. Subtract eight from both sides. I get five y equals negative eleven divided by 5, y equals negative 11 over 5. And I can stop there. I'm all done. Okay, so that's it for, for y. So now what I want to do is from here, and notice how this is not a whole number. This is 11 fifths. I can write this as a decimal if I wanted to. Uh, that's also going to be negative 2.2. So if I did 11 divided by 5. But this is why graphing isn't very efficient sometimes because I got a decimal as an answer. So I got a decimal as an answer. That makes it really, really difficult to solve by graphing. So now that I have y, I have to take that y and I have to take it over and I got to substitute it in for y here, here or here, and I get to choose whichever equation looks the easiest. Because it should give me the same answer each time. So I know what y is, and I gotta plug it back in. So I'm gonna plug it into this first one right here. It's that first one, and I got some crazy lines here, so I'm gonna erase them, sorry. It's just trying to draw a picture to show you what's going on here. But I'll rewrite it right here. So this first one is x equals four times whatever y is, well y is negative 2.2 plus four. All right, well, 4 times negative 2.2, that is going to be negative 8.8 .8 plus 4, which is going to give me negative 4.4. So x equals negative 4.4. So there's my final solution. My x is negative 4.4. My y is negative 2.2. And I am all done. Okay, so here I have two more. Okay. I want you to try this one on your own and see how you do. What I want you to do when you try this is solve for this y by adding 2x to both sides and then you can make your substitution. So let's solve for y here by adding 2x, make your substitution and then solve and see how you do. So pause it, see what happens. So as we said, we're going to solve for, for that y, so that means I have to add 2x to both sides. 
that goes away, I'm left with y equals 2x plus 1. So this equation became y equals 2x plus 1. So now I have a y equals. I can make that substitution into my other equation. y is equal to 2x plus 1, so I can replace this y with 2x plus 1. So that's what I'm going to do. I have 3x plus 2x plus 1. I replace that y with 2x plus 1. And all that's equal to 11. So I rewrote this one here. Well, combine my like terms. That's not being multiplied by anything, so I just have 5x plus 1 equals 11. So now I solve, and I should have gotten x equals 2. So now that I got x equals 2, I have to plug that in to here, here, or here. And again, to me, this is the easiest one to plug it into, so that's what I'm going to substitute it in. So I have y equals 2 times 2 plus 1. I replace this x with the 2, because that's what it is. 4 plus 1 is 5. So I get the final solution of 2, 5. Here's your last one that I want you to try. Pause it. See how you do. I'm not going to give you a hint on how to start this one. Pause it. Try it. See how you do. Okay? And then you can unpause it for the solution. So I'm going to solve for this x because this is the only one that doesn't have a coefficient. So there's no division that I have to do. So all I have to do to solve for x is subtract 6y on both sides. That goes away. I'm left with x equals 18 minus 6y. Now I can plug that in for x in this first equation. So that's 2 times, well, whatever x is. x is 18 minus 6y minus 3y is equal to negative 24. So I rewrote this equation here, but I replaced the x with what x is equal to. x is equal to all of this. Now i got to solve by doing distributive property. That's going to give me 36. That's going to give me negative 12y. And then I bring down the rest of everything else. Combine my like terms. So that's negative 15y equals negative 24 subtract 36 on both sides. I get negative 15y equals negative 60. Of course you can use a calculator for this. Um, so if you need to use a calculator, please use a calculator. So that makes this a little bit easier. So I get y equals 4. So y is equal to 4. So now I got to plug in that y is equal to 4. I can plug it into this one, this one, or this one. Let's plug it in here because it looks like the least amount of math x equals 18 minus 6 times 4. Well, that's 18 minus 24, which is negative 6. So my final solution is negative 6 and 4. And I'm done. Okay, guys. That's it. So here's your independent practice. Try it and see what happens. This is the x you need to solve for. Give it a shot. There's no harm in getting it done. Okay. That's all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching. Your DS out.